Welcome to Just Minding My Business Radio, where we are moving at the speed of God, learning what we didn't know we didn't know. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Haskins. So grab a pen and paper and get ready for information that you can use. Welcome to Just Minding My Business Media, LLC. Faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. Corey Ten Bloom. Today, we welcome authors from the anthology Unshakable Faith to be released June 23rd, 2022. This book is the work of women who have overcome many difficulties that challenge their faith, but their faith was unshakable. The purpose of this anthology is to help you to redirect your emotions, redefine who God says you are, and provide a space in which you can renew yourself. Each chapter ends with three questions for you, the reader, to answer that will empower you to move up to your next level. We welcome Tamala Janice Coleman, who is a three times bestseller author with a total of 12 books published. Tamala has been writing for over 16 years and she has developed the potential to write with intentions to encourage and inspire others. Furthermore, Tamala has credits as a director and producer of stage plays and film. She has won several film script credits to date. She is also the founder and editor in chief of Inspire Christian Magazine. Tamala strives to empower women and inspire the masses with the power of faith. Welcome Tamala. Hello, and thank you so much. It's an honor to be back with you again. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So tell us about your screenwrite um, career. That sounds exciting. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Well, it didn't start that way. Actually, when I started writing, it's been over, whoo, over 17 years ago. I started writing and I started writing poetry. Then I started doing actually devotionals for women. And after that, I just I just wanted to just branch out to something else, you know, just do something different. So the Lord led me to write stage plays. And so I actually went to a stage play and I was sitting on the front row and I was sitting next to my husband and my brother-in-law. And I was like, I can do this. <laughs> I can do that. And so the next week I just started, you know, just started writing. And I contact one of my mentors that was all already in the um, stage plays. And, you know, she was already developed and producing and all that and directing. So I just kind of followed her and shadowed her. And so I actually co-directed my first stage play, uh, which was in 2013, 14, around that time. And then I decided to do it on my own. So I did all the footwork, work, all the background and everything. So that's where it started from there. So my actual first stage play, which was entitled Lord Change My Heart, it actually became my first short film. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's amazing when you just say, I'm going to do this. What can <laughs> happen? <laughs> yes. Yes. You got to speak. Your words have power. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And what was the name of that again? Lord Change My Heart. So can people still see that somewhere? Yes, they can. Actually, it's on YouTube. All they need to do is they can pull up my name, Tamala Coleman, or they can just pull up Lord Change My Heart, and it would just show me as the director of that. Yes. All righty now. Yeah, we definitely need to talk. (laughs) Yes, ma'am. ideas in my head. (laughs) I just need somebody like you. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, ma'am. Just give me a call. (laughs) Well, so your wife for the uh, anthology, Unshakable Faith. What does that mean to you? Oh, wow. It means a lot. Um, In order for us to get past a lot of things in life, we have to have that unshakable, relentless faith. Um, just the faith, no matter what's going on in our lives, no matter what we're faced with, 
you know, face with, we just got to fight it within ourselves to know that I can still make it through. It doesn't matter what you're faced with tomorrow. It doesn't make, it doesn't matter what you're faced with next week. You just have to have that unshakable faith, relentless faith, and continue to hold on to your faith. Because when I think about, you know, my past and my purpose, um, I just started thinking about that just recently, a lot lately, you know, because, you know, during the pandemic, a lot of people just kind of lost their faith, you know, and everything that was going on, you know, so everything was shaking around them. But I had to learn to, that God has a purpose for me. And because he has a purpose for me, I have to stand on, on my faith. So the name of my chapter for the book is actually I'm Still Standing. Mm. Oh, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> yes, I'm still standing. standing. I'm still standing. Yes. Yeah. I love so it. I've learned to whatever I'm going through, I'm still standing. Whatever I'm faced with, I'm still standing. Whatever I'm going to get, you know, whatever is coming my way, I'm still standing. Yes. Absolutely. And oh, I love that. I do too. And in the world we live in today with so much chaos and so much uncertainty and we don't know from one minute to the next yes what's going to happen how it's going to affect us many of the things that's going on around us we have no control over no control no none whatsoever but the one thing we do have control over is yes our faith, our faith. Our faith, that's all I have is my faith. When then that everything is gone, I have to stand on my faith because I know whatever it is that I'm going through, I'm not in it by myself. <laughs> the Lord is with me. So I have to stand on my faith. I'm standing on unshakable, relentless faith because it doesn't matter, you know, and I try to tell everybody that I come in contact with, you know, about my faith, you know, how strong I've become over the years, how wise I've become. And my faith has been my strength because when you go through one thing, you know, you got to do that. You can get through everything else. Um, so, yeah, it, I'm still standing. So that's the name of my chapter. Mm. Okay. I'm still standing. Yeah. That's, that's going to be something that's going to ring with so many people. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Like Ruth says, she says that all the time. Mm. Uh, standing. Standing. no matter what i've gone through i'm still here i'm still standing and still it standing. is by faith that i'm standing it's by my relationship with the god of my understanding that yes I'm still, that i'm still yes. standing. so yes. yeah this is going to resonate with a lot of people yes it is thank you thank yes, you well thank you so much my dear mm. we will thank be you. in touch especially about the screen work thank you <laughs> okay yeah. thank you you enjoy and we'll be, don't go nowhere because we'll be right back. Okay, thank you. Okay, my dear. God bless you. God bless you too. We welcome Sarita Moody, who is the CEO of Special Hands Outreach and a professional school counselor who's been in education for 15 years. As an advocate of mental and emotional health, her effort is to be the change agent that walks alongside a child to find freedom from their traumas and empower positive change. Welcome, Sarita. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Glad to have you, Sarita. Wow. Mental health, that's a big thing right now. All across Indeed the world, everywhere. Mm -hmm. they even today I was even listening, they were talking about animals and their mental health. And oh. how with the pandemic, with everybody being home, the animal, the, the pets got used to the people being home and then they left, went back to work. So now they depressed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so who do you serve in this mental health space? Um, all ages. Uh, right now, I, as a professional school counselor, I work with kids from pre-K all the way up until fifth grade. Um, but on my part-time days, I work with, with children and adults of all ages. Okay. So, I just... so what have you seen mm -hmm. in terms of some of the challenges that people are having from the neck up? 
Well, I can speak from personal experience and, you know, just because I'm a counselor doesn't mean I'm, you know, immune to any of these things. Um, and um, starting from the children, you know, one of the things that you notice that they've lost in this pandemic time and probably adults too, is the lack of social um, behavior. And what I mean by that is they've had to learn how to re-socialize themselves with each other. Mm. That's that makes sense. sense. Oh, it makes absolute sense. It is very difficult even for adults to do that who have really been locked down, especially people who are single, mm-hmm. uh, living by themselves. A pandemic just took them away from all of their associations. Right. But we do have something to relate to so that we can try to gear up. It's difficult. But children don't have that. No. They, had, they had their learning period of socialization taken away from them. Correct. So now they have to totally rebuild, not even, they're not rebuilding. They have to learn how to socialize, which Absolutely. is, that's just got to be immense. What does Absolutely. that look like? Well, look in the like? schoolhouse, it looks very much like a bunch of peer mediation, you know, and reteaching. Um, students are having to relearn. The simple thing as to raise a hand before you speak instead of just blurting out, you know, um, to consider someone else before yourself, um, things that, things like that, you know, I had to reteach, um, empathy and compassion, uh, lessons to the kiddos and just kind of recenter, um, their knowledge, understanding and, um, care for one another. Hmm. What does it look like on the playground? Yes, that seems to be done across the board with adults too, because I mean, um, we have to show, be an example, number one. We have to be an example for our children. And one of the things that really disturbs me immensely is in the politic world, how they step on other people to shine. When we teach our children, don't do that. And I, that really bothers me a whole lot because I teach my child not to down other people to make yourself look good. That, that is just horrible as far as I'm concerned because everybody has a gift and everybody has a place. Mm-hmm. I think um, that's, a, um, I'm trying to get my words together to really explain what I wanna say, but I think In that field, it's easier to say than do. Um, It's almost like back in the day when you were a kid and your parents says, do what I say because I say so, right? But you're doing it too, mom and dad, right? But I can't do it. You know, almost that level of hypocrisy, I hate to say, but it is because we're trying to teach them the right way while modeling something totally opposite. Exactly. And so I think that integrity and fidelity is so Mm -hmm. important um, in this perspective and self-awareness. You got to have those reflective talks with you and I think that's hard for even adults to do, let alone teaching children how to do it. Yeah, I think it very often the world that we live in does not teach that. It doesn't model that we are have an internal navigator and we're responsible to it. Mm-hmm. And we don't get to just barrel our way through life without Absolutely. ever stopping, stopping to do that self-examining and correction, self-correction. You know, um, some of us are like ships without a rudder. We're just out there and we're just floating around and whatever we run into is, you know, oh, well, I just ran into it. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. Oh my goodness, they're sinking. Oh, well, I'm still floating. It's kind of that attitude. Yep. We haven't learned how, with all the knowledge that we're supposed to have, all the technology, we don't know how to self-regulate as individuals. Right. Yeah. And that's what our children are seeing. And boy, they got to see a lot of that at home. Absolutely. And a lot of parents have gotten to see uh, that this thing that we do called teaching, uh, whether we're teaching 
emotional, social development or math or, or you know, art or, I mean, reading, whatever, it, it you know, a teacher is everything really, you That's know, right. because you got to deal with whatever emotional state a child is in, in that moment. And it changes from morning till the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So kids, kids, just like adults go through several different emotions. And one of the things that I do is really try to help them understand how to process through those emotions in, in every point of the day, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. 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 And I think that's one of the things that we came to realize as adults. Yeah. If we are paying attention is that, oh, I felt one way. 10 minutes ago, right. I'm not there right now. And by the end of the day, I'm in a totally different place. And we forget, you know, yeah. I think that was one of the learn part of the pandemic was about learning to be human again. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, where we and, before, and being able to accept that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Well, we could have a long, you're coming oh, yeah. We're going to have to have to come, you, you have to come back just to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because this is a huge topic. It is. Everybody it really is. is facing it. Everybody yeah. is facing it. Okay. I'll let you take the rest, Ida. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be quiet. Unshakable no faith. What yeah. Your why? Um, it's been my whole life. I believe that um, you know, some people are prodigies to preach, some people are prodigies to teach. I believe that as a child, I've had this unbelievable, unsurmountable, non under, you know, just, you can't understand why I've had this faith and, um, you know, walking my lifestyle that I walked out, I had a rough road, a uh, single mom of six kids doing it on my own. And it was of my own doing that I got myself there. Um, but I just trusted God to maneuver us through the mess that I made. And um, I talk about that in this anthology a bit, just a bit. Wow. Wow. And this fabulous. Yes. And just, you sound like you are so humbly, humble about the situation, honest and taking accountability, Mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't do. Yeah. You know, because yeah. all the things that happen to us in the world sometimes, sometimes we kind of edged it on. Oh, yeah. And to, yeah. Be, to be honest about it is cleansing mm-hmm. in itself. It the, is. The first step towards healing is taking responsibility. Yes. That's, That's I always think when you take responsibility, then you can go into all the other avenues. But as long as you're pointing fingers, blaming everybody else and everything else, you can't get anywhere. So I really commend you for your honesty and yeah. taking responsibility. That's huge. Thank you. That's Thank very, you. It's very huge. And Sarita, we're definitely going to have to have you come back because mm-hmm. we are so <laughs> passionate about the mental health arena. Uh, we interview a lot of people all the time surrounding mm-hmm. that topic because we know it's important. It is. Of course, some of them, we had to learn the hard way, like a lot of people, because we grew up in an era where it was a taboo, you Absolutely. know, or crazy. Oh, yeah. Now we know it's just like any other mm-hmm. part of your body. Mm-hmm. You have and, that's, and that's what my, um, my chapter is pretty much about. It, the title of it um, is Trauma Validated in Christ. Mm. Oh, nice. And it sounds like an oxymoron, but I can't wait for you to read the book and really get to it. But it does talk about when you use the word trauma already, that's going to be a mental health topic. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think that God used me because, you know, one of the things that you got to be in this field, and I think that counseling is not just a career, it's a ministry for me. It's the innate thing that he predestinated me to be. Um, because I'm very transparent, like probably my husband would say to a fault. Sometimes he thinks that I wear everything out in the open, but I know that is definitely how God has used a lot of people to, to, to be reached. 
to mm-hmm. start the process of getting healed. Because when people see and feel your genuineness and 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 um, individual care for a person, um, they want to open up and share because they feel safe. There's safety in that. And um, I know that that is something God has blessed me with. And I want to help as many people as I can, uh, because I remember going through things in my life and I didn't have that help. Mm -hmm. And so I've always wanted to be, you know, the change agent for people in some kind of servitude way, you know, Mm -hmm. and, and God just led me down this path of, of mental health and, um, social and emotional, um, development and, you know, engagement pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. We definitely appreciate all that you do. Mm -hmm. You You are definitely in demand. (laughs) Yes. And will be for years to come. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now that people realize how important it is to take care of yourself from the neck up. Absolutely. Yeah. They, they, the light bulb has turned on now. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. It's very important mm-hmm. to every aspect of your life. Absolutely. And, and, and the longevity and, and consistency of your life. I mean, I, I, you know, your mental state affects how your body goes. We can talk about that another day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but your mental state affects the things that goes on in your physical being and can can hinder your life expectancy really wow absolutely we definitely gotta have you back i'm looking forward to that conversation i look forward to get into this deeper so thank you so much sarita for all that you do we truly appreciate you and definitely looking forward to your chapter Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to Just Minding My Business Radio. I'm your host, Ida Crawford. And I'm your co-host, Ruth Hansen. We hope you enjoyed the show and appreciate you stopping by. Many blessings to you and yours.